Hi everyone, the new huge tutorial is here. In this new video I will show you how to create this fantastic fractured effect, how to animate it or how to create different effects. I will also show you different tricks to use Blender at its best. I worked a lot on this project, so I will be very happy if you support me with a like and subscribe. Let's get started. To get started, create your graphics in Illustrator and group them. The next step is to use the inflate effect. Find this feature in 3D and materials. You can find 3D and materials within the effects section. Select the inflate effect. Click on the inflate both sides checkbox and set depth to zero. Now export your graphics. Select it and go to asset export. Set the OBJ format and click on export. To import your graphic in Blender, you need to go to File, then select Import, Wavefront. Find the folder in which you exported the graphic from Illustrator, and select the OBJ file. If your graphic seems gigantic, like mine, you need to press S key and scale your graphic moving your mouse. The next step is to create the material, we need to remove the base color that was generated by Illustrator, select the graphic and go to materials, select the minus button to remove all materials. Create new material and name it crystal. Then open the shader editor. Before we start to creating the crystal settings, I recommend you to change the viewport and set another default world texture. Delete the default material, and with Shift plus A, search the glass BSDF. Next step is to set our world. With Shift plus A, add an environment texture. For this tutorial you can use my free texture, link in bio. I suggest you to use the Node Wrangler add-on. In Blender there are many free and useful add-ons. To install it, go to Edit, select the preference, search for Node Wrangler and click on the checkbox. One useful thing of this add-on is that you can easily use the Ctrl or Command plus T to add a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. At this point, you can create your own settings or use mine. On the Environment Texture node, I set the Mirror Ball. For Mapping node, I use these settings here. Add a Bright and Contrast node. Set the Bright on 0,3. Set the Contrast on 2,6. On Background node, set the Strength on 22. Go back to Glass Material, and increase the Earth. Last step is to set the Bloom effect. If you want, you can copy my settings to get a same result. In this part of this tutorial, I will show you how to fracture your graphics. We need to activate Add Add-on, so go to Edit, select Preference, and search the Cell Fracture add-on. You didn't need to download anything because Blender have a lot of pre-installed add-ons. Click on the checkbox and close Preference tab. Select your graphic, and click on Object, select Quick Effect, and select Cell Fracture. 
This is the tab in which you can control the fracture. Source limit is the number of piece in which your graphic will be fracture. I set it to 100, the higher the value, the harder it will be for the computer to create the effect, I don't recommend exceeding 100, if you don't have a very good processor. Click on the smooth interior tick, and also on the debug points and debug boolean ticks, then click OK. It is normal that it takes a few minutes to perform this effect, do not worry and wait, if 100 is too high a value for your processor, I suggest you lower it to 50. As you can see there are some black dots scattered around the graphics, you have to eliminate them. To do this you just need to select one and delete it with the X key. Second thing to do is to hide the original graphics, usually you will always find it in the first place of the list, you have to click both on the eye and on the camera, so it will not be visible in the final render. There are two different ways to work with this effect, the first is great for making an animation like the one at the beginning of the video. The second method, instead, is used to move the pieces manually, but it is not good for animation, because it generates an uncontrolled explosion. In this video, I will show you both methods. First method. Select one of your pieces and then go to object and select rigid body, then click on active. Now select all the pieces of your graphic, click object, select rigid body, and then click on copy from active. Now your graphic is influenceable to physics, so I if you press the space bar key, your graphic will fall off. Go to scene properties and uncheck the gravities box. With shift plus A, add a force field, with this you can create a different type of explosions. Go to force field properties and set the strength to 100, then press the space bar key to start the animation. As you see, the pieces of your graphics are moving away from the force field. To set the strength to create an explosion, we need to increase the strength and create a keyframe animation. To do this, set the force to zero and click on the keyframe next to it to activate it. Move 10 frames forward and set the keyframe to zero again. Now move a few frames like to frame 15 and set a very high strength. Initially I put 10,000, don't forget to activate the keyframe. Last thing before seeing the result, we have to change the radius of action of the explosion. To do this go to the falloff section and activate min and max distance. Create a small range, my settings are min distance 0.4, max distance 0.18. Now we can see our result. As you can see it is a different result from the previous one, but it is not yet a good result, in this case we just need to enhance the strength of the force field. You can add a zero to the strength until you find a good result, I have set a strength of 1 million. Every time you change values, you always have to set the keyframe again. Now the power is excellent, but you have to increase the range, in this way the explosion will seem even stronger. You can try different settings until you create the perfect explosion. You can also create more than one force to vary your explosion by creating different combinations. And you can also modify the keyframes, to make one force activate earlier than the other, to do so you just need to move the keyframes. If you don't want the pieces to float in infinity you will have to activate gravity, but even in this case you can choose when and with what power always using the keyframes. At this point in my animation, I want all the pieces to start falling down. So make sure you have gravity ticked, set Z gravity to zero and activate a keyframe. Then move a few frames and set Z gravity to minus 9.8. In this way, starting the animation, from frame 40, gravity will activate, and the pieces will begin to fall. If you are trying to create an animation longer than 250 frames, you will notice that at some point the simulation freezes. To solve this problem you have to go to Scene Properties, select Cache, here you can change the duration of the simulation. In this second part of the tutorial, I show you how to manually move the pieces of your graphic. If you have not already tried it, you will see that if you try to move a piece, it will seem to disappear. In order to freely move the pieces, you will need to convert them to mesh. To do this, select a piece, right-click, go to Convert, select Mesh, 
Now you can freely move your piece. To repeat the same thing select all your pieces and convert them into mash. It is normal for the computer to take a few minutes to convert all the mash. In my case, I waited for about 6 minutes. If you don't want to wait too long, you can select small separate groups and convert them by repeating the procedure several times until all the pieces are converted. Now you can move all pieces freely. If you use a graphic like mine with separate letters, you will notice that many pieces are joined together. You can easily solve this error by going to edit mode by clicking the tab key. Select all the toggles, and click the P key, select the by loose parts option. Now go back to object mode. The pieces are now separated. To make this separation on all the pieces, select all the graphics and go to edit mode, select all the toggles with the command A and then use the command P. The last step to improve your graphics is to set the origins. Select all pieces of artwork, right click, select set origin, then origin to geometry. Now you can finally move the pieces of your graphic as you want. Last step, let's add a black background to the graphics, to do that add a plane with shift plus A. Scale it with the S key and turn it and move it behind your figure. Now let's create a material, which does not reflect the environment texture. Set a black color and set specular to zero. To create animation or export your graphic, add a camera to the scene. Move it away from the artwork. Divide the screen in two. Go to view, select camera and set active camera. I show you an extremely useful trick to have the camera always focus on your graphics. Add an empty object, I added a cube, so it is clearly visible. Select the camera. Go to Object Constrain Properties and select Track 2. With the dropper select the empty cube. Now the camera will always follow the empty cube. This is useful because empty objects are invisible in renderings and are very useful in 3D graphics. Now I'll show you another cool trick. I want my camera to rotate around my graphics. To do this, I add an empty circle. Scale it and position it in such a way as to bring it closer to the camera. Select the camera again, go again to the object constrain properties, but this time select child of, and with the dropper select the circle. This way, the camera is attached to the circle and will make every movement the circle makes. You can do the same thing with the background too, you have to select the background, go to the object constrain properties, select child of, and connect the background to the circle. In this case, the only thing to animate is the circle because both the camera and the background are attached to the circle. To do this, use the keyframe method as in the previous steps. Select the starting frame of the animation, select the axis on which it will rotate, in this case the Z axis, and set 0 to the starting frame, Change the value and set the new keyframe. To export your image, you just need to set your settings here and if you want to export a precise image, here you can set which frame you want to export. If you want to export your animation, use the PNG format and remember to always select the destination folder. I recommend watching this video here because I show how to export an animation from Blender and edit it in Premiere Pro. This video has come to an end. Thanks for following me up to here, it was very challenging to make this project and I hope you will support this video with a like and subscribe, to motivate the creation of even more crazy tutorials.